what's going on? Welcome to another video. Welcome to the channel, the Shifted Perspective YouTube channel. I've got the infamous E90 from Justin Bice. Uh, we're hanging out, and of course, I've got my E39 M5. But something I've been thinking about recently is, you know, what kind of videos do we want to talk about? What do we want to talk about with these two cars? Because we don't always have the opportunity to film both of the cars uh, in one time. So what I ended up coming up with is uh, why both of us picked these cars, which is, you know, naturally aspirated four-door manual older BMWs, the older BMW. So that they have the new BMW, you know, what they're doing with the turbos and the new cars versus the old school BMW, you know, older school BMW. So uh, we're going to take a few drives and uh, we're going to go around, we're going to talk about the cars. And I think they accomplish a very similar purpose, at least in our hearts. You know, why did we want a car like this? What does it mean? What's it like to drive, you know, an older, E90 and an E39 are not normally comparable cars to each other. You're not going to cross shop them, but they kind of accomplish the same thing. So we're going to talk about that today. So let's get inside. Okay, guys. So we are in Justin's 2006 BMW 330 Xi. So that's a mouthful. But 13 years ago, not 15 years ago, like you guys are used to with the M5, but 13 years ago, you know, this was a... I would kind of say a little bit more prestigious of a car. It's BMW, it's brand new, uh, you know, back in the day. And it was always kind of a good, simple car. But the thing about it now is it's kind of cheap. You know, if you're gonna buy this, you don't need um, to fork over a ton of money like you used to. So with that being said, it doesn't require you to uh, spend your life savings on a new car. But I guess kind of what I'm trying to get at here is this is still a great car. It has seat heaters, AC works perfect, the shifter's great. It's such a great car for the money. Um, it's hard to sort of convince me to buy an economy car that's the same price. So if you don't really care about, you know, the newest features, the, you know, the newest engine, the newest body style, I think this is a car that's so great. It's a great daily, it's a good looking car. The question really becomes, and really the criticism really turns into, the maintenance and you know Justin and I talk all the time and you know his car hasn't really had problems the BMWs that I've owned haven't really had serious problems uh, you know maybe part of that's luck but I also think part of that is understanding the car you're buying you know if you're buying an N54 engine that has been you know had methanol and E85 and all kinds of stuff um, you're you know you're kind of pushing your luck in, in my opinion so you're buying a an engine and a car that's kind of notorious for having issues. Uh, whereas if you buy a car like this, straight six, manual, um, you know, some creature comforts, but nothing over the top. Uh, it's got I, an Apple TV. Has, oh yeah, so, <laughs> so if you're a guy who enjoys driving, um, prefers a car that doesn't look crazy dated and doesn't mind a car that's not brand new. And also you're pretty good with your hands. Uh, maybe you can do your own oil changes. You don't mind doing a few upgrades if you know a little vent breaks or you need to replace bulbs or just normal maintenance, maybe brakes. I think this is a great car for you. You know, I'm not a professional car reviewer, but I wanted to talk about like how simple these older BMWs are and how good they still are to drive. You know, this isn't an M3 or anything, but like Jesus Christ, like it has good turn in, it sounds fine. Uh, you know, you get feedback where, you know, with the F30s, you know, they, they kind of took a lot of that away, which is why I think part of the reason why those F30s and also even the M3s of that generation, the F80s, don't have that little spice that we like in the E90 community. One of the biggest things that I keep going back to is, you know, this has hydraulic steering, it has a manual, it has the recipe for a car that is not gonna feel dated. And you know, you go around one of these turns, you know, you're not gonna like power slide or do anything crazy, but like, it feels good to drive. It's a nice car, um, you know, can drive it a little bit harder and it's not gonna freak out. Um, you know, the, the thing with, you know, the modern cars like a Camry or something for a similar price, you've got front wheel drive and you've got a car that's not very fun to drive. So with that said, um, I, I'm really gonna make a very, very vast generalization and say, you know, this is the recipe for success 
uh, for a car that's going to last you a long time in your mind. You know, if you aspire to drive a car that's extremely fast, you know, this isn't for you. You know, this is not for the community that needs the loud, high performance, you know, high revving or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but even if you're an M3 driver, if you want a car that's good to daily that you're not going to want to like kill yourself to drive, you know, it's not a horrible driving car. I mean, this is a good car. I mean, that's maybe a little bit of a, a backhanded compliment, but this isn't, this isn't a sports car. But it is a really, really uh, well driving car, especially for the price, uh, and especially for how kind of simple it is. There's no fake burbles, uh, there's no backfires, there's nothing crazy about it. It's classy, you know, it doesn't look brand new, but it's nice. <laughs> but it's good it goes it definitely goes it'll get out of the way I like it so I drove this car earlier today and still like the main takeaway that I got from the time that I've been in here is just like the overall build quality of the car and I think it's true that they don't really make cars the way that they used to like the solid feel even just shutting the doors it's a different experience and we were joking because like every time that I've tried to shut the doors today it hasn't like quite shut all the way so I have to like re-shut it and that's just like the difference in the build quality of um, being such a substantial thing you really have to use your muscles for the doors uh, even the handbrake pulling up on the handbrake requires more force than like modern day cars then as far as the manual goes for me I just think that driving manual just feels more fun even if it's not quite as fast like we were talking about uh, the new automatics how they're able to shift faster than a person can shift it's just not the same feeling and i feel like maybe like a little bit fast and the furious type thing you know paul walker whatever but i don't know i just like the way that it feels shifting gears it really feels like you're driving the car in a way that you just don't feel with automatics at least in my opinion so that's the thing is like with these newer cars like they just announced the G23 series that's not going to have an, uh, not even an option for a manual, at least not in the US. I just think that it's a different direction that maybe a lot of car enthusiasts like myself aren't really ready for. Um, even like the newer M cars, like is the new M5, can you get that? That was a manual? So it's a different direction and I get that they're going for the performance is better on the new automatics but I just think that there's something about manual it's hard to describe but it's just more of a just feel more connected to the car I guess. So as far as the interiors and stuff on both my car and this car even though these cars are pretty old I don't feel like I'm sitting in an old car and I think part of that is because maybe the lack of the technology stuff it doesn't feel like nothing in here really feels like super outdated like it's still really nice materials and i think that that's that would be my preference in a car is to have like the more premium feel but without all of the funny gadgets and stuff that you get in like the f30s and the newer cars but yeah i really like this like when i first got in it i really didn't know what to expect but i think it's like better than what I was thinking in my head it was gonna feel like because like I was saying earlier in my video when you look at this car from the outside it doesn't really strike you as like a supercar or anything like that it just kind of looks like a sort of ordinary sedan but you get in it and it's actually surprisingly quick for what it is I like the subtlety of it I guess and I like the fact that the exhaust isn't like overwhelming but that's just my personal taste all right guys, so we both drove uh, each other's cars around like pretty much half the day. And uh, I think it's safe to say that really the general takeaway is that I think both of these are great cars. Both of them are great for different reasons. You know, this is kind of the classic, you know, six speed luxury, you know, M car that you can buy. It sort of has that, um, you know, the looks to it. You know, I was driving behind it. It looks so cool from the yeah, outside. You know, that's, that's a big reason why I like it. And then yours, it's, it's just very simple like it's good looking it's four doors it's manual um reliable it's, not, it's reliable it's simple yeah. um, and you can do a lot to it um you know maintenance wise you can do a lot yourself right and uh you know now they're both of them are down significantly in price so you know a lot more people can afford them so right yeah i think that on paper this might even apply to like every car brand but it seems like 
sort of the six speed rear wheel drive or maybe all wheel drive in your case um you know that kind of combo seems to work really well where there's not a lot of bells and whistles of you know rev matching auto rev matching right. uh, you know fake burbles fake sound through the stereo like all that stuff just takes away from driving i mean it's clear that it takes away because yeah. even an e90 that's not some performance luxury saloon um you know still drives really good right yeah that, yeah for sure so it's it's hard to argue to buy kind of a basic three series even though it's better on paper mm -hmm. um or even a brand new m3 when something like an e90 is still a lot of car you uh, save so much money compared to like a brand new f30 or g20 or something like that yeah i mean i am excited for the g20 yeah, i we'll think see. they actually did a lot of good things uh, the exterior styling is a bit a lot of people hate on it, but I, I think we should talk about that at some point, about how yeah. the old BMW may still be there. I don't know. I think that could be interesting. But um, anyways, yeah, man, it was a fun day. It's fun driving each other's cars. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's always really cool to do a video like this um, and kind of give sort of a synopsis of what is it really like? You know, what is it actually like to own these cars? You know, the maintenance is probably the biggest fear, but if you're handy, probably be okay yeah look so, up a youtube video look up a youtube video we both might be able to help you on our channels and a lot more channels out there that can help you know more too so uh thanks again for watching don't forget so he has all kinds of content on diys and really anything camera slash bmw or car related i have a lot of uh, similar content as well so as you guys know so um stay tuned for more check him out i'll see you guys next time